Good evening. This is the Factor Review, a weekly in-depth analysis of social and economic issues here in Mongolia by our columnist and economist, Mr. Charles Sachan. Good evening. Hi. And I'm your host, Zagat Tusim. Today's topics are on a new city development in Umngau Amik, Mongolian foreign policy related to Davos World Economic Forum, and public transportation challenges in Mongolia. On a new city development in Umngav, Hamburg Tsum in Umngav Amik is one of the government initiatives to restore and develop urban and rural areas in Mongolia. The Prime Minister noted that Hamburg Tsum is going to be a model sum by the year of 2040 and it will be funded by Ayutala Mining Company. They're providing 50 million US dollars over the next five years. By developing Hamburg into a modern town, locals along with mining workers of Tavan Tazra and Oyu Tazra and their families will be able to live in a safe and sustainable environment. So my question to you, Mr. Jaro Sehang, is do you think Hamburg Damik is an ideal place to develop into urban area? The, the, I think it's the, the best and only possible place to make a town. It's uh, nearby Oyu Tazra, 35 kilometers. And uh, from Ulaanbaatar, it is 650 kilometers away, very, very far. Mm. <clears throat> and plus, uh, OT is, a, because it's the world no, renowned mining, and in, in a year from now, their underground mining work will be finished, and they will start to produce, which will make Mongolia number five largest copper producing country in the world. Mm. So, uh, plus uh, OT, as you said, $50 million investment will be made into the local Hambotsu. They have signed the agreement. Uh, the new CEO of uh, OT, Deidre Lingenfelder, mm -hmm. Mrs. Uh, Lingenfelder, and Mr. Mukbatar, who is the Minister for Construction and Urban Development, I am a governor, some governor, they have signed an agreement last week about that urban development of Hamburg Tsum. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and uh, they have anyway a fund for local development, a very well-known fund, working already for more than 10 years. And uh, <clears throat> OT Plus had already laid a road, very nice asphalt road from OT mine to Hamburg Tsum. And I have also visited their uh, drinking water cleaning facility mm -hmm. And they have already this transmitting line to many households there. So I think it has uh, every uh, sense to continue that development. Plus, whenever it comes to the city, uh, then, um, as I said, 650 kilometers from Ulaanbaatar, and according to Batsukh, Mr. Batsukh, who mm -hmm. is chairman of the OT board, he said that we daily run charter flights four or five charter flights in between to Ulaanbaatar and Hamburg mm -hmm. just to uh, carry their uh, labor uh, workforces. And according to Mr. Batsukh, uh, at least more than half of this uh, workforce will be living in Hamburg Tsum. They will create all necessary conditions for that. So we are expecting modern uh, city with maybe over 30 million, uh, million 30,000 people by the year 2040. But however, I, I do expect even more people because, because two things. One is the, because the high quality of school, maybe university down the road, there will be more attracting place for people to come and work in Hall IMAC, mm -hmm. which is a host of many major important uh, mining uh, deposits, including not only Oyu Tadre copper mine, but also Tavun Tadre, mm. uh, the largest coke and coal reserve of Mongolia. And all these two sites together make almost 60% of Mongolian export. Mm. So I see really a modern, vibr vibrating city uh, in uh, 20 years from now. Sounds great excited about the modern city. My next question to you is, Mr. Jaro Sahang, what measures do you think should be taken to prevent the possible overpopulation in Hamburg? Now, that's like a very, very good question because that's what we are facing today in Ulaanbaatar city, too much traffic. You know, Ulaanbaatar city was planned for half a million people. Now it's, we have one and a half million people, really overcrowded. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So uh, Hamburg Zum is going to probably not only be model uh, town, but model Zum for whole country. And probably down the road, it will compete with Dazan Zadrat, which is the center of Heimat. Uh, <clears throat> why? Because uh, the new infrastructure, modern quality schools, etc., I said, will be attracting more people. But the most important thing is not only good planning, mm -hmm. but the right execution. Mm -hmm. Where we have a mistake in Ulaanbaatar city, mm -hmm. we had uh, a lot of land corruption, bad city management, which hopefully should not be happening there. It requires good governance, mm -hmm. local governance, and uh, land management properly. Because the more people come, the more will be a chance to have land piece of land under the table. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> the other thing is uh, smart public transport. That system, the route should be correctly uh, made and the management is to be of public transport in the right way. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's the way how we can uh, 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 override the overpopulation like in Ozambata. And you know, the other thing I want to particularly highlight, and I visited several, several times, is this song. And you know, it's in the area where the small hills are there, rocky hills, and uh, not very much open, I would say, mm -hmm. if it is Gobi Sum compared with other Gobi Sum. But it's to be completely green city, to be really a model mm -hmm. city, good town. You know, just across the road, uh, across the sorry, border, there is a Chinese inner Mongolian city called Bogot in Mongolian, Bata in Chinese. Okay. That city is so green that one of the greenest city in uh, China. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be a good model for Hamburg Sum to learn, mm -hmm. not only plant, to make a plantation, but how to take care of them, because mm -hmm. it's the same soil, Gobi soil. Mm -hmm. so. Now let's move on to our next topic. The World Economic Forum took place between May 22nd and May 26th. Usually held in January, the forum was held in May for the first time since 1971. This year's theme is History at Turning Point, Government Policies and Business Strategies. Minister of Foreign Affairs of Mongolia, Batsitsik, attended the International Forum and participated in three meetings, Rethinking and Rebuilding Tourism, Strengthening Vulnerable Market Economies, and the Future of Democracy. She also met Qatar Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister and exchanged views on Mongolian-Qatar relations and cooperation. Uh, Mr. Jarosakhan, what expectations do you have from the forum? Well, uh, this forum is by nature is not making any decisions. The top leaders of states, businesses meet every year at this time in Davos. Not this time, but as you said uh, earlier. And uh, uh, and discuss the modern current trend in political and economic, social, environment, the life of the, our planet, mm -hmm. world. And really they discuss, they really high content discussions going on and I'm glad that this time a Mongolian foreign minister, Ms. Batsitseg, uh, was there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like to highlight out of many good ideas, Mr. Soros, uh, remark. Mm. He usually comes every year there and uh, made the remarks, but this year remark was uh, particularly interesting. In, in the amid of the war in Ukraine and this ca coming out, uh, not all country, but from out of the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm. So what he was saying was that now the war in Ukraine is the war between open and closed society. Mm. Open society institutions are work for people. Mm -hmm for their better life. But closed society institutions are work for a leader, for one person. Mm. So that's the clash of these two societies and it may um, have, may, may end up having nuclear. That, uh, this is the third world beginning and that we may not, our civilization may not survive. Mm. That's what his remark, very mm. uh, tough remark he made. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, our minister Batsitsik, she had met also uh, not only the Qatari, but also Saudi Arabia, Deputy uh, Minister for Tourism. They have discussed about tourism development, taking care of the nature, to find the right balance between the you consuming and developing. 
and also um, they talked about the uh, hospitality industri industry people's training. Mm. I hope there will be some result later on. He, our uh, Minister Batsitsik also met Ms. Mrs. Kwok Hamilton. Of the, she is a CEO of uh, World Trade Center. And uh, the next event, next forum, Exp World Export Promotion Forum will be taking place in Mongolia in 2023. Mm -hmm. And I believe this is an important event for us to diversify our economy, not only for mining, but to the other sector, because we need to develop other experts too. So uh, <clears throat> that's, uh, it's good that, that this, uh, we, we were there in Davos in a smaller group, but they are now we are more in the process of sharing their information. And Mrs. Batsitsa gave an uh, extended interview a couple of days ago in Utri in Sanyo. Mm -hmm. Now let's move on to our next topic on public transportation challenges in the, the city of Ulaanbaatar. Currently, there are 985 public transportations in the city, but a minimum of 1,425 buses are needed for accessible service, according to the first deputy in charge of the sector, Sandak uh, Surang. The most pressing issue, however, is that 75% of the passenger buses have been in use for more than 10 years, and 540 buses will be removed from public transportation, calling for an urgent need to upgrade public transportation. And accordingly, Mongolian, Mongolia plans to develop the public transport fleet by importing 1,500 buses by the year of 2024. As of June 1st, a new 80 public transportation buses and 20 school buses opened their service. And there's a plan to import a total of 300 buses by the by August 25th of this year. And other works such as replanning and re-engineering the city routes and installing traffic sensors will, will also be done and it's estimated that these solutions will reduce traffic congestions by up to 50% in the long run. Yes. What issues are remaining despite these new bus imports? Well, I would say there are three kind of issues. Mm -hmm. First, about investment. You know, city received until this year only 40 billion MNT per year as investment mm -hmm. for infrastructure development. But from this year, 420 billion, almost 10 times increase. Uh, it starts with the, for example, yesterday on the international for example, uh, on the International Children's Day, it started the first investment shown to people. It was uh, about 60 new buses, 10 electric double-deck buses. So we'll see now in this in city first time the double-deck buses. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it's safe and secure. And 20 school buses. And uh, <coughs> yes, since 2009, there were, there were no renovation of fleets of public buses in the town. We talk about Ulaanbaatar city. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, only this year, total 1,000 should be replaced out of them. Uh, because Mongolians need safe, comfortable, warm, non-frozen window, user-friendly buses. Mm -hmm. Second issue is management issue that we are face, facing. The public bus service was privatized in Mongolia. But as we see, we don't see the, uh, the, the substantial uh, result out of it. Why? Because they have not made the full freedom. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, prices to be not that small as, as it is today. Just some comparison. Since 2014, we have 5, 000, 500 weeks per ride. Mm -hmm. The ride doesn't matter how long and how long and how many routes you go. Uh, uh, it is about 16 cents. Mm -hmm. 
while it, the, the, these prices to be around one dollar or so in uh, developed countries, but a half at least uh, in the developing countries. And plus, also the diesel price have increased. Per one liter, it's almost one dollar, three thousand five hundred mm -hmm. MNT. Mm -hmm. So compared with the costs that are running, the profit they are receiving is the, the revenue says they are receiving is very small. And there are several complaints on that. Uh, and a major thing is also not only the price, but also many layers of society receive free right. Senior people, pensioners, students. For example, with the students, instead of giving them free ride, how about uh, exempting them or part-time employees mm. from all social insurance taxes, which they pay as uh, full-time employees, which is cutting the uh, employment of young people, students, mm. because the owner is not interested to hire with that expenses. So in that way, some social regulations could be changed and to save this uh, public buses. Um, there is a, a person, Mr. Campbell, the head of large size bus business runners federation, that's the long name. Mm -hmm. And he said that um, why the government is buying buses with cash. I was surprised. He said that 24 billion MNT was taken in cash, mm -hmm. converted and sent to, uh, or taken to the countryside. So. It may be he's hinting on certain corruption mm -hmm. issue. Secondly, he also said, because he's the man who wrote, he really knows the matter of things. And he said, that how about just making the price free according to the market? Well, we cannot do it immediately or full price free, but uh, certain subsidies to be not at that level, mm -hmm. not like now. The other thing is he was very much critical about the s smart card system made by Koreans, and the terms of cooperation is finished, 25% of this uh, smart card cooperation owned by city. But their term is finished in 2019, but up to now they are extending. Meanwhile, Mongolia has already easy a system of payment, etc. Now, because this payment network is not very clear, and not everybody knows where to buy these tickets, uh, or this uh, smart card, Smart card, by the way, $4,500 just to install one. So altogether, it makes very expensive. And plus, recently, according to him, people start to pay cash into, to the driver, mm -hmm. which is not coming at the end to the company. Mm -hmm. As a result, all companies are in the, in the loss, he said. And also, he said that uh, I think I also uh, kind of agree with that. He said that we need uh, urgently BRT, bus rapid transit rather than LRT, mm -hmm. light uh, rail uh, transit. We have talked uh, last time about that. It turned out that this uh, special bus line, if it is specified, designed for all the buses, things will be much more, and the practice of many cities show that this is a better practice. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, the issue is price. Yes, price to be more free, but not too completely free, because not everybody can afford riding in that way. So these are my uh, takes on a, a public transport system in Ulaanbaatar city. Great. That concludes our all three topics, and we will see you next week at this time. Thank you, Mr. Jarosahan. Thank you. See you. Thank you. Good night.